I am very pleased today to be talking to Dr. Robert Kahn, co-creator of the internet, chairman, CEO, and president of Corporation for, Inter for National Research and Initiative. Uh, Dr. Robert Kahn, when you were first working on the internet in the 60s and 70s, did you sit down and say, well, I've got an idea which could change politics, economics, the way we make money, the way people meet, and perhaps even the way people think? Well, of course, we had these really grand ideas to you know, change the way the world works. But no, seriously, um, the idea of connecting computers and building networks to enable that was really a pretty far fetched notion when, when I began. Most people didn't think there was any need for it. Um, you have to remember back in the in the 60s when I started to work on what was arguably the very first computer network called the ARPANET, there were very few institutions that even had time sharing machines that could make use of networks. Um, the military, which had supported the work, basically had none. And so as a business proposition, it didn't make sense to most people. And so for us, uh, for me personally, it was just an interesting technical challenge. I noticed the, the examples for the advantages of the internet that you come up with. Most of them are about e-government, or what we would call e-government now, the citizen access to government, citizen access to information. Um, how do you think about this, this issue of not so much governance but control, where we're beginning to see the internet being used as a, uh, a method perhaps of surveillance by governments and governments set, um, taking the option of perhaps even cutting off the internet uh, for people? Are you a freedom fundament fundamentalist or do you believe that there does need to be some sort of control? Well, I'm a pragmatist when it comes to what, what, what's happening. Every government is going to make its own decisions about what makes sense in their country. They have different you know, styles, different cultures, uh, and they'll adapt in, in their own ways. I suspect that uh, there are some things that do need some more global oversight. One of them is the evolution of the technical aspects of the net. You can't have every country of the world coming up with different addressing schemes and expecting everything to work fine. But they're not static. For every technical procedure that we have today, it's very likely somebody will come up with something that's better in the future. So we need to allow for what we call the logical extensions and follow-ons. And it could very well be we get some new capabilities that could supplant the old. And the internet is, is like this big potential petri dish where you can try, you know what that is in biology, yeah. but, but you, can, you can try different things and see what happens. Is it important to you that there is a single internet? I mean, there has been discussion about the balkanization of the internet, that it being split off into to different intranets. Well, I don't know that I would say it's important to me or not important to me. I mean, that's, that's the image I have of what the internet is. Because the minute you start to balkanize it, you start to make it more difficult to make things happen. You begin to ask questions, well, what net are they on? And how do I get into that net? And what protocols do they use? And I think it's just going to impede the free flow of, of information. Do you think we've entirely got our, our head around the inter our heads around the internet? Well, I wouldn't purport to speak for you, um, but I think it's very clear that, uh, that the capabilities of the internet are expansive. That is, we, we don't really know yet what, what's possible in the future. The essence of technology, which is the field that I come out of, is that it's, it's the unpredictable discoveries that tend to define what the future is like. We call them the nonlinearities. You can easily look at the past and, and project linearly what's going to happen. So bandwidth will keep increasing, computer power will keep increasing. It's the things we don't now know about that suddenly show up through somebody's inspiration or investment in a new idea that can suddenly change the dynamic of the whole internet. And I suspect that if, if we could come back in 50 or 100 years or longer, assuming the internet is still around, I, th I think it would probably astound us as to what's actually going on.